So I want to thank everybody for coming. My name is Jesse Martin. I'm the Executive Vice President for 1199. We're here, we represent 90 caregivers here at Charles Gate. We have since 1981. Um, end of last week, we were notified by the employer here that they will be uh, starting a closure proceeding of the nursing home services in this complex. We are deeply troubled by this news. Not only the impact of our members, but particularly the impact on the patients. Charles Gate offers the social safety net of Providence. We are suffering in this state from a 50% increase in homelessness. We're suffering from a lack of affordable health care and access to health care for people that are living on the edge and living in poverty. Charles Gate provides services to this extremely vulnerable population. What well, we are deeply concerned, not just for our members, but for the residents, is the lack of transparency, the lack of community engagement about this potential closure. We're asking the governor's administration, the attorney general's office, the Department of Health, to be mindful of the impact of this potential closure on the residents and this entire community. We've unfortunately heard two very significant rumors that we are troubled by with this closure. One, that the owner here, who's a for-profit company, is looking to close these nursing services to expand their apartments to make more money. The second rumor that we're deeply troubled by, and again, these are rumors, because we've seen no actual transparency from this ownership group about what their plans are, is that they are going to change some of the services here to a non-union, non-profit to help give other services to the community. That means over 90 of our members, some of which have given their entire adult lives to the service of these residents will be without a job to be replaced by non-union workers providing community services. That's very troubling to us, very troubling. So I'd like to introduce Oprah, one of our members, to give a few remarks about her concerns. Oprah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Oprah Page. I am a CNA and I have been at Charles Gate since 2008. We are feeling very saddened by the fact that our jobs are surprisingly, unexpectedly, are closing down on us. And the residents that we work for are also saddened because they don't know where they go they will go. We are saddened. We are living with no benefits. All we received was a letter saying thank you for your services. And that is it. We are not getting any severance package or pension. And that's sad. We are greatly depressed. We don't know how our future, we don't know where we are heading next. I am a mom and a grandma, and I am worried about how to care for my family. We are going to lose our medical insurance. In this country, you cannot go to a hospital without a medical card or medical insurance, or see a doctor without a medical card. How are we going to be covered? We found for four years through our union we fought for our excellent health care. 
coverage and another job will not like will not like will not be like Charles Gate. We are worried about our residents. They are scared and anxious. Some of them are recently homeless and do know and do know uh, where they are going to go. They have lots of questions that we can't answer. In the 15 years I have been here, there have been 10 to 15 management teams. Each one comes with a new mindset about how they want to run this place. But, but each one is looking to put extra money in their pockets, that expense of workers and residents. We all feel like we have been dumped, used for selfish gain. They have made all their money, and they are now turning the building into something else to make more money. We deserve better. So do our residents. We are used to fighting through our union for what we need at Charles Gate. Whether that is staffing, protective equipment or supplies, now we are fighting for the future of our nursing home. We are, no look, we are looking to the governor and our elected officers to help us in our fight so we can keep this valuable resource open to the public, our elderly are also being dumped and carrying outside for homeless. This is very shameful and embarrassing. Thank you. Um, I'd like to also introduce Marianne, one of our members, say a few words. My name is Marianne Dabbe. My, my name is Mary Ann David. I am a medication aide and a CNA, and I have worked at Charleston for 29 years. This situation we are faced with is very scary and disappointing. I am here to uh, speak to uh, Colonel Mikey and our local lawmakers to help us fight our fight. Just last week, Charles Gate gave us a short notice, informing us that they were closing the door because they cannot no longer fund the nursing home. This came to us as a blow. We have been here for so many years Many of us have given our services daily to this administration for them to just come last minute of time and say that they are, they are turning their backs on us, leaving us empty handed. No serum pay, nothing of the kind. Um, they, they are. The um, AARP gave AARP gave each nursing home five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand they gave each nursing home, plus other money from the state. We have not received a penny, a penny of that money, and they are closing the door down on us. We have been trying to get some of that money that we receive from ARP and the government to boost our pay. They have been refusing, they have been dragging their feet, they have been coming on sin, and they're closing down on us, and they still have this money. What happened to the money? We want to know what happened with this money that the state have given us and ARP gave us. Are they going to close and take 
our money away. It was for us. 20% of that money was for Chaske, and 80% of the money was for the knife, the, the CNA, the staff. It was for us, and we never got a cent. So we want to know whether they're going to walk away with all, giving us a cent. This money, we want to know what happened to our money. It's for us. We need it. Since they are not giving us any severance pay, we need this money as a severance pay. They should give us our money. So it is um, very unfair and very disheartening. It's devastating to us, the residents, every one of us, the residents as a whole, they are very depressed. They are sad. Most of them came to Chaske without any family. They are homeless. They depend on, they depend on us. And we have been there for the resident and management. We have seen management come, management leave, and we have always been there. They brought in agencies all the time and pay agency twice of what they were giving us, which is not fair. We are left with nothing. We have families to feed. How are we going to pay our rent? How are we going to pay our rent? This is the question for management, the child's care management to just come and shut the door in our face just like that with a short notice. They, they knew what they are doing. So we are here. We beg and corner my key, the law makers, to stand with us for this fight. We need everybody help. Marion, how do you spell your name? M-A-R-Y-A-N-N. D D A R B E H. All right, thank you. And you know, I just want to echo what Marianne just said, and then we have one more member to speak, and uh, uh, two or three other speakers. But um, what Marianne speaking about is ARPA. Um, in the 2022 legislative session here in Rhode Island, state government allocated 30 million dollars to nursing homes, 80 percent of which was required to give to nursing home direct care staff, 20 percent. The employers were allowed to keep for themselves. I will echo what she just said. Not a single member, a single direct care staff person in this nursing home received a penny of that government money. When the union demanded those negotiations, nothing happened. We were trying to lift up wages here to be competitive, to be able to hire and retain staff, and nothing happened. Uh, we have one more member to speak. Carolyn? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, good afternoon. I don't know if it's good or bad. Um, just what we've been going through at Charleske. When I started at Charleske, I started working at Charleske 2008. I have been through numerous changes in management. But one thing has reminded me the same. Workers deserve to provide quality care to the residents who depend on us. For us, for those that don't know, we care for some of the most vulnerable residents in Rhode Island. Many of our residents are accurately ill, homeless, or elderly with limited options for care due to their circumstances. For prospective child care, is a 100% Medicaid funded facility, while the state average is 70. Child care services allow our residents to access care that they otherwise may have been denied elsewhere. But to put it plainly, we are there for them when other facilities cannot or will not take them in. The rumors swings around, swing it around, about child care closing are many things confusing, disappointing, and uplifting are few that come to mind. We have gotten no clear answers from management regarding our future as workers or what will or what will happen to our residents. As you can imagine, this is nerve wracking for someone who involves especially those that are called child care home. It's like 
me coming to you in your home today, oh, guess what? I'm sending you to, to Africa. You have never been to Africa. Imagine how you will feel. All kind of things will come to mind. What am I going into? A jungle? Am I going to be in a tree? Am I going to be where? It's exactly what our residents are going through right now. They don't know where they are going. Some unfortunately don't have relatives, but we are their relatives. We are their families. How did I know that? Because during COVID, we went through COVID with them. There were no relatives. Relatives could not enter the building. We have to hold their hands when they are dying and just counsel them until they give their last breath. When they give their last breath, we wrap them all in the rag, I'm sorry to say rag, because Undertaker could not enter the building to do it professionally. So we could only do it the way we knew, bring them from sixth floor all the way down and put them in the car for the Undertaker to take them. So to these people, the few that are stay here, to them, we are the relatives. We are the friends, not only caregiver. So I mean, it just break our heart. When we come in the morning, it's like, where am I going? I say, I don't know. You don't know what to say. It's, it's so broken hearted, but we deal with it. You know, we are equipped for it. We are trained for it. We just got to put our face above waters and answer the question the best way we can. Why we have always cared deeply about our residents, COVID-19 reinforced what we are caregivers already knew that we are the closest thing to family for many of our residents. We show up for them through it all, including threats to our own health, low wages, and challenges with management. We knew those relationships were the most consistent thing for many of our residents during the time of isolation. Scattering our residents throughout the state not only uproot them from their home, but could dis dispute their care and cause undue stress to a population that already has very little control of their circumstances. Our residents deserve stability and dignity, and leaving them without clear answers about their future is the opposite of that. Charles Gay is not only our residents' home. It's, a, it's critically important piece of the social safety net in the Providence. The threatening to close Charles Gate is nothing short of a severe crisis and public health emergency for Rhode Island. I also worked at Patoxy Village when it was hit with threat of shutdown. At that time, the state and federal government came in and saved the facility from closing. Where is that response today? From Governor McCain, from, from Governor McCain, from our state legislature, they have a responsibility to protect all Rhode Islanders and the people house poor at Chaske are no, they are no exception. In that fact, one could argue they need the most assistance. As a long-term caregiver, Chaske caregiver, I am proud to join my co-workers today standing up for our residents, our jobs, and the health of our community. In the past, we have fought for safe staffing, fair wages, and better benefits. And today, we continue to fight. We are fighting for Charles Gate, for the state to recognize the value of the services we provide and step in immediately to prevent the closure of Charles Gate. We appreciate that, so members, everybody, stand with us, please. We need that help for our residents, our family, our brothers, our mothers, our sisters. This is who they are to us from COVID, from COVID up to now. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask, like to ask uh, Representative Kislak to come. Charles Gate is part of her district. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolyn, Marianne, and Oprah. I want to thank you for sharing your stories and the stories of some of your patients and the stories of Charles Gate. You are our critical care workforce. We cannot do enough to thank you. I'm very concerned that one of the things we thought we did to thank you, I'm learning now hadn't happened. We need to make sure that the pass-through funds 
go to you, which yeah. is what yeah. we intended. Yeah. And and so I want to start with that. I'm coming Thank here you. with Go lots ahead. with lots of <laughs> with gratitude yes. and with a lot of questions because Charles Gate is a really important part of our healthcare system in Providence and safety net. It is a safety net nursing home and it is critical to our healthcare system. And I think that we need to be very, very careful um, about it. And also I'm seeing so, I, I, this intersection is also one of the busiest and most dangerous in the city. So we're here gathered and it's been really interesting to watch the traffic. Um, so a, a whole bunch of things come together here right now. Um, we need to make sure that our elders and our frail elders are cared for well and by very caring and qualified staff like you all here. Um, we need to figure out what to do. I am incredibly concerned about closing Charles Gate in particular because of the special role it serves as a safety net nursing home. I'm really concerned for the residents. And I'm concerned about what happens if it closes after it's closed for folks who need to be placed in a safety net nursing home. What happens when we lose that safety net? I think we need to really think very carefully about how we ensure that we maintain services for folks, for vulnerable folks, for homeless folks who need nursing levels of care. And uh, I, I'm just here to raise questions. I'm here to work together with you all to make sure that the residents are safe and cared for. And, that, and, and I hope that we can figure out a way forward to make sure that we continue to have safety net nursing care that we need here in Providence and Rhode Island. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, just also uh, uh, ask uh, Senator Mack to come up and say a few words. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm also here to stand in solidarity with our workers and with the folks who make this their residence. Charles Gate can't just be a campaign stop for folks because we have a congregation of folks um, in our communities here. It can't just be a campaign stop. We have to make sure that every single decision, especially for our most vulnerable Rhode Islands, centers those vulnerable Rhode Island, Rhode Islanders and the workers that care for them. It's a shame that still we have to fight for living wages for folks who make sure that People in our state who need the most care and the most attention don't have enough resources to make it to make it home to pay their bills, to pay for food, and to pay for life's basic necessities. We need to make sure that our safety infrastructure for every single directly impacted Rhode Islander and our most vulnerable population don't just leave our state because Massachusetts is 15 minutes away. We need to make sure that our workforce is able to stay here, live here, and become an integral part of our communities. Right now, the reality is that our direct care workers can't make Rhode Island their home and can't make the communities where their children, their grandparents, or their loved ones call this here home. And that is something that we should be ashamed of right here in our state. And we should be able to make steps towards making sure, though the ARPA funds didn't make it to our direct care workers in the past, we can as a state make sure that no matter who takes ownership of Charles Gate, that we are att attending to the care of the residents here, again, some of the most vulnerable in our state, but also to the direct care workers who make sure that they're cared for. More work needs to be done to make sure that our safety nets are secure and that we don't have a crisis. We're right now experiencing folks who can't even figure out where their next meal is going to come, where their roof's going to come, um, where, how they're going to pay for a roof over their head. We have Rhode Islanders who don't know if their job that they have, the career that they've put um, and invested their education years in and their, um, and their livelihoods, at the expense of their families are going to be able to live paycheck to paycheck or sometimes paycheck to paycheck that doesn't actually cover life's essential needs. 
this is a this shouldn't be a complex issue. There are other states that seem to make it work, and there are other systems that seem to make it work. I hope that we can work in partnership with not just the direct care workers, but with the state and other folks who are um, who care about the residents here and the future residents here and the care of all Rhode Islanders. So thank you again to our direct care workers. Your work. Um, is immensely um, important to our communities. You are important to our communities, and it's about time that our state shows you that your work not only makes all of our communities better, um, but it makes our communities safer. So thank you all for the work that you do on behalf of Rhode Islanders, the most vulnerable population. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. Um, I just want to echo, we are asking the state of Rhode Island to go to the same extraordinary measures that they have gone to in the past to save the social safety net of Providence. Years ago, the state put Bannister House in receivership and found an owner that can operate that facility with the dignity and respect the residents and the staff deserve. We're asking the state to do the same thing here for our Charles Gate community and for the staff that care for them. I want to thank uh, the treasurer's office for being here. I want to thank Representative Kislak and Senator Mack for the words that they spoke and their support. Representative Morales and Representative Sanchez, the AFL-CIO, and the Working Families Party. Uh, together, as a group, we can bring dignity to those who deserve it and for the people that bring dignity to people every single day. Thank you very much. Are you planning to go down any judicial route or perform any strike action regarding the uh, regarding Charles Gate closure? Um, one, we are currently uh, in. Uh, 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 we will make an assessment about what we can do to properly represent our members and protect the livelihood of these residents. This is the first step in what we are going to consider our campaign to save Charles Gate. Simple as that. The owner said that on Friday they got calls from a lot of other nursing homes looking to take residents and hire staff. Um, have other have people here, how many people here found job, other jobs or found other places? Well, I, I'm sure some people have. I know that uh, our membership, which makes up uh, nearly 90% of the staff here at this facility, um, they don't want to start over. Yeah. You know, we, we have members here that have worked here, I, I'm not joking, 41 years. Why should they have to go to somewhere else to start over again? They've sacrificed not only their health during this pandemic, but they've sacrificed a part of who they are with their families and their own communities to be here for these residents in the tough times. They shouldn't have to start over. Now, is there a staffing need in many nursing homes? Absolutely. But that's also, I want to highlight that the ARPA funds allocated by the State Assembly were meant to help the staffing issues. And as you heard directly from these members, they received none of it. So if there was a goodwill to try to keep this facility operative and to keep these services, you would expect the ownership, a for-profit ownership, to be able to come to the table with dignity and negotiate those wage increases, those incentives to the frontline staff so they didn't have to be in this position. What are the CNA wages on average here? On average here, many of our members make anywhere between $17 and $20 an hour. You know, I will say, you know, part of the nursing home industry across this state, which is really disturbing to me as a human being, is that dietary housekeeping and laundry staff typically made just above minimum wage. And some of them have been here 20 or 30 years. That means they're making $13 or $13.50. And that's wrong. You know, during this pandemic, <coughs> housekeeping staff were vital for infection control procedures. Yeah. They protected people's lives and making sure facilities like Charles Gate were clean. To ask them to live in poverty is wrong. And there have been measures that the state has taken over the last two years to help lift up those wages. But for-profit companies like Charles Gate seem to always find the loopholes to keep money for themselves and keep money away from caregivers and residents.